this part of the training, we're going to look at a set of cooling technologies which invert the idea of conventional air conditioning, which relies on the cooling of air to cool a space and the people, and uses instead another medium, water, which has much more thermal capacity, many more thermal benefits, heat transfer benefits compared to air, and uses that to cool not the air, but cool the spaces in which the people are present, in which uh, the spaces that they are occupying, and that's called structure and radiant cooling. We will first understand the science and the working principles of these technologies, and then we will look at how they compare with conventional air conditioning systems. And finally, we will understand how these systems are designed and some real world examples of these technologies in buildings that are uh, existing in India right now. Before we begin the whole process of inverting air conditioning on its head, there are three questions that I would like to pose to you. The first question is this, what is the merit of using air, which is actually an insulating medium, for causing heat transfer? So if you imagine a thermos or some sort of a bubble wrap that is used for insulating substances, they all have air pockets in them which prevent heat transfer from happening across two spaces that are at different temperatures, right? So air has been conventionally used to stop the flow of heat, but air conditioning systems actually use air to create a cooling effect, which is nothing more than picking up heat from the body, right? So there is something to be questioned over there. The second question I have is, if I gave you two tanks, and I placed them on the top of two buildings and I gave you two different cooling system, uh, two different mechanisms to empty the tank. I gave one team a tap and a way to drill it into the bottom of, of the tank and I gave another, another team an electric pump with a connection to empty the tank out. Now amongst those two teams, which one do you think would exert the least amount of environmental impact to empty the two tanks? I'm sure you will agree that draining a tank is much more environmentally efficient because it uses less energy. It uses a natural process, which is gravity flow, whereas the other one uses electricity to create the same impact of letting the water out from the tank. So if you can think of an air conditioner as a pump of heat, what you're doing with an AC is actually taking heat from within the room, using a lot of electricity and pumping it uphill because you're pumping it from a low temperature place, which is about say 24 degrees, this is what we want in the room, to outside air, which is at about 40 degrees. So to pump against the gradient, you need electricity. And that's what an AC is doing. However, if you think of a building as a tank of heat, which has stored all the heat in its, in its body, like a battery, if you can just provide a way to drain the heat out spontaneously, that could achieve a similar cooling effect. And Structure and radiant cooling actually are trying to emulate this effect of draining heat versus pumping heat. The third question I have for you is, if I gave you a choice of choosing two heat transfer processes, one is a linear heat transfer process. By, what, by, by that what I mean is, if I could get double the cooling by doubling the temperature difference, that would be a, a system of the kind that is used in air conditioning. So for example, if the air conditioner is at a certain temperature, say it's emitting air at about 24 degrees and my body is at 35 degrees. So that's approximately a 10 degree temperature difference. Now to double that cooling, I would have to double the temperature difference, which means that the 10 degree temperature difference would have to be doubled. That is 20 degrees, which means the air conditioner would have to be placed at, a, at about 15 degrees. I would have to set it at 15 degrees. You can imagine the amount of energy consumption that would involve. However, if I were to use a different kind of cooling system, which uses not convection or conduction, both of those are linearly proportional to the delta of the temperature. If I use radiation, for instance, to make myself feel cool, then I can harness the fourth power of the temperature difference, which means doubling the temperature difference increases the cooling by a power of 16 or the factor of 16. In the previous case, by doubling, I was getting only two times the cooling. Here I'm getting 16 times the cooling. So you can imagine 
Radiation based cooling would be much more energy efficient than conduction or convection based cooling. Because of these three compelling reasons, alternate cooling systems have been designed which use water instead of air. They drain the heat rather than pumping it and then use the fourth power of the temperature difference compared to the linear temperature difference phenomenon. Now why is water so much better than air as a heat transfer medium, right? In the previous slide we questioned the merit of air. There are three reasons why water is much more efficient than air as a heat transfer medium. The first is that water has approximately 20 times the thermal conductivity of air. If you remember air is an insulin, whereas uh, water is a decent conductor of heat. The specific heat capacity of water is four times that of air, which means to create one uh, uh, degree of temperature difference, you need approximately 4.18 watts, which means that water can store much more heat per kg through one degree of temperature difference, whereas air would have to be put through a high delta T or a lot of temperature change to store decent amounts of heat. And finally, the density of water is much more compared to air, which means per unit volume, you can store much more heat than you can in the same volume of air. When you look at all these factors together, it turns out that by just looking at the improved heat capacity of water compared to air and the improved or the higher density of water compared to air, you get a multiplier effect of approximately 3400 compared to air, which means that one liter of water can absorb the same amount of heat that 3400 liters of air could absorb. Now look at the implications of this one change of the cooling medium from air to water. The first impact would be that if I wanted to create 100 tons of cooling with air versus water, for an air-based system, I would need to pump approximately 40,000 cubic feet of air per minute. Because of the low thermal capacity of air, the low specific heat capacity and the low density. However, to create the same amount of cooling with water as the medium, I need only 32 cubic feet of water per minute. Now this means that there is a direct savings in terms of the amount of power you need. You can imagine trying to pump a compressible fluid such as air versus a relatively incompressible fluid like water and you will see that I can get a massive power reduction by choosing water to create 100 tons of cooling compared to air. So let's look at the, the fundamental differences between structure radiant cooling and conventional air conditioning. The whole point of conventional air conditioning is to throw cool air on the occupants bodies, right? Largely the face because very often our bodies, at least in working environments are covered with clothing and insulating clothing, clothing very often. So air conditioning relies purely on convection currents to make the body feel cool. And it involves pumping of heat from a lower temperature region to a higher temperature region, right? So this is how air conditioning works. Now let's see how structure and radiant cooling systems work. The main difference is that instead of cooling the air, one cools the surfaces that the person is exposed to. Say for example, in this room, if I could cool this wall and I stood just next to a cooled wall, I would automatically feel cooler, right? Now, the big difference in terms of just the, the power relation in a air conditioned space versus a uh, radiant or structure cool place is that in the case of air conditioning, I'm this passive needy recipient of cooling and I can't really do much without a technology around which uses a lot of environmental resources to create this, this cooling, which is not even very efficient. Whereas in the case of structure and radiant cooling, the person becomes the source of their own cooling because rather than me receiving cooling, I'm actually able to emanate my heat or radiate my heat to the surrounding surfaces and that creates a cooling effect. So this completely uh, overturns the power relations between the person and their cooling uh, as well. The reason why air became a mainstay of air conditioning systems was because 
air was a very efficient medium to heat very quickly without using much energy in the West where air conditioning was invented. So air conditioning was actually used to heat spaces and that's where air is a very effective medium. However, air is not a very effective medium for cooling because you need large volumes of air to be thrown on a person's body and face to make the person feel cool. Right? So air conditioning is a classic case of a good technology being used in the wrong kind of situation. And that is what structure and radiant cooling are trying to correct. They are actually a climate appropriate, region appropriate technique for cooling people in tropical places where you could drain the heat rather than pump the heat. How powerful can radiation be? Now, we, we have often seen that air conditioners are able to cool spaces very effectively. Very few people at least feel you know, hot in an air conditioned room. And you might think if I let that very powerful process go, which is air based cooling, can I really achieve much cooling through just radiation? A simple thing like providing a cool wall, how much heat can it absorb from the human body? So this is a small calculation we did. For a typical human being, we use the radiant heat transfer equation, which is here, which shows the radiant heat transfer between two objects is a function of a constant. It's called the Stephen Boltzmann constant. The emissivity of the human skin, which is the amount of heat it can give off compared to a black body. So it's about 98% compared to a black body. So it's a pretty good radiator, our human skin. The area of the human body, which is able to radiate, right? Of course, the, if you wear insulating clothing, the amount of area reduces. But a typical human being wearing cotton clothing, for instance, would have a surface area of approximately 1.5 meters square. And this is the temperature difference between the body and a cool surface. Now, depending on what the temperature of the cool surface is, say if I keep it at approximately 28 degrees right? and the human skin is at 35 degrees, if I use this equation, I can figure out that approximately 66 watts of heat can be lost by the human body through providing cool surfaces around them. Now, this is approximately 55% of the net heat that a human body generates because of metabolic activity and other processes, which is pretty powerful. I can lose 55% of the heat without cooling the air if I just provide cool surfaces using very efficient and natural systems. So that's what we're trying to harness in structure and radiant cooling. The goal of this cooling is to make the occupant, in this case, a person wearing conventional office clothing, feel a sensation of what's called thermal delight, right? So there is a thing called thermal comfort, which is just about making it, just about passing the exam. Whereas this is a state of real well-being, real comfort, real joy of being in a space that is cooled by uh, through structure or radiant cooling. So what is quite evident here is that this person is feeling cool. As you can see, the skin temperature is about well, in this case, 30 degrees, but usually it's about 35 degrees. And the person is sitting in a space which is kept at 21 degrees, but there is no air conditioner, if you notice, right? It, there is some system, and we'll get to that a little bit later, which is somehow able to be under the influence of the sun on the outside, but is able to resist it and still keeps the internal surfaces at 21 degrees. And this temperature difference between the human skin and the surface creates a radiation effect and the person spontaneously loses heat and feels cool. This is what we're trying to achieve in structure or radiant cooling. To understand the mathematical uh, systems that are at play in terms of designing radiation systems, we need to understand two things. One is what's called the emissivity of the heat emitting surface, in this case, the human skin. So we can look at tables that allow us to calculate what the emissivity of different kinds of clothing different colors of clothing, etc. would be. So that's one principle that is involved. A second very vital principle is what's called the view and the angle factor. Now, what is this angle factor? It's essentially the angle the occupant makes with the surrounding surfaces in the room. So say, for example, I'm standing here in one corner of the room. The angle my body makes with the walls behind is the view angle factor for this surface, right? And you can imagine if I move my position, say towards the camera, if I were to move towards you, the angle that I would make with the wall would 
reduce right so in the beginning my angle would have been wide and later my angle would have been lower which means that as I move away from the surface that has the cooling embedded in it the less effective the radiant cooling system is and that follows that's quite common sense right the further away you are from the source of the cooling the less effective that cooling source would be or the cooling system would be however if I'm able to cover all sides of this room with a radiant cooling system then no matter where I am I'm going to have a pretty good angle with some surface at any given time and that's why radiant cooling systems or structure cooling systems involve providing cooling on as many surfaces as possible so that your location doesn't dramatically change how cool you feel all right so the reason why these are this is an important parameter is because the temperature that you feel is a very direct part of the thermal comfort that human beings feel so if you remember from the thermal comfort module that we covered earlier Thermal comfort is dependent on the temperature, air temperature. Everybody can relate to this. When you set the AC at a lower temperature, you tend to feel more comfortable. If it's relatively moderate humidity, you tend to feel comfortable. If there is adequate airflow, for example, by just turning on a fan, one can feel comfortable. Metabolic rate can improve or reduce your thermal comfort, which means if you are, say, for example, jogging on the spot, but don't do anything to increase any of these other things, right then one can start feeling uncomfortable similarly clothing we all know that if we were to wear buttoned up clothing and ties and, and another jacket over our, our one layer of clothing you would feel discomfort what most cooling systems and most cooling designers often forget is the real uh, impact of the temperature of the walls around which can be used as an agent of cooling so this Really vital cooling effect is ignored in conventional air conditioning design and this is what radiant cooling and structure cooling are trying to emphasize is this missed trick and we're trying to revive cooling based on controlling the mean radiant temperature. Now what is mean radiant temperature? As the name suggests it is actually an average of the temperatures of the surfaces around a person. So it is the weighted average of the temperature of all surrounding surfaces weighted according to the angle that the body makes with that surface and the emissivity of each of those surfaces right so we will look at it mathematically in just a second so imagine that there is an occupant at the center of this room here and these are the angles that the person is making with all the walls here are the temperatures of all the walls and say the emissivity is a value called e1 e2 e3 e4 the mean radiant temperature would actually be this equation. It is the angle of this, wall, this angle multiplied by the emissivity of this surface multiplied by its temperature plus the same thing for the second wall, third wall, fourth wall divided by the summation of the multiplication of the emissivity into the angle. This gives me a temperature value which is a representative temperature that I am feeling within the room. And you can imagine if I can reduce this to a, a decent degree, I can have enough of a delta temperature difference between my skin and those walls to create sufficient cooling. Another concept that one must understand when trying to design radiant cooling systems is this concept of what's called the operative temperature. The operative temperature is the actual temperature the human body would feel when you are exposed to cooled air as well as to a low mean radiant temperature. The actual temperature that your body will sense is the mathematical average of the two. Now the implication of this in terms of design is this, that by reducing the mean radiant temperature, I can allow myself to keep a relatively high dry bulb or air temperature and yet manage to feel relatively cool. So for example, if I want to feel 28 degrees, which is 27.85 here, I don't need to cool the air to 20 seven degrees i can keep the air at 30 degrees which means save a lot of energy from my ac and instead find a way to keep my walls cool at 25 degrees and hence i will feel a relatively comfortable 28 degrees now this might not seem like a big difference but per degree that you can uh, save on your air conditioning setting you can save approximately six to eight percent energy 
which means this system even though I'm keeping the wall not, not at a very low temperature, it's only about 26 degrees, I'm able to save about 12 to 16% energy by just this system, right? Okay, now those were the science principles and engineering principles of structure and radiant cooling. Now we're going to get into the actual application of these technologies in real world buildings and we're going to see how they are installed design and we're going to look at some of the savings that can be achieved by these systems. If you have further questions, please do not hesitate to get in touch with us uh, on our email addresses or through our portal fairconditioning.org. Thank you.